Now let's start today's China Currents. Let's look at the latest developments of Starbucks in China. Recently, Starbucks officially announced a sale of 60% of its business in China, valued at about $2.4 billion. The buyer is the Chinese private equity firm Boyu Capital. Starbucks also announced an ambitious target to expand its network from more than 8,000 stores in China to 20,000 stores. This goal has been ridiculed by Chinese financial media as a wish list, especially given the highly competitive bubble tea and coffee market in China, where Starbucks no longer holds its former dominance. Starbucks entered China on January 11, 1999. At that time, China's GDP per capita was only $780, and the Starbucks coffee cost more than $5. As China's economy grew, white-collar and middle-class consumers became Starbucks' loyal customers. At its peak in 2017, Starbucks' market share in China's coffee market reached 43%. And during that time, some local governments even gave preferential treatment to Starbucks when selecting companies for industrial clusters. However, in recent years, the rise of local coffee brands in China has driven down the price of a cup of coffee to below $1.5, while launching new products each month and aggressively expanding into third- and fourth-tier cities, areas that Starbucks has long ignored. Currently, Starbucks' market share has fallen to 14%, trailing behind Luckin Coffee with 35 and Coty Coffee with 18%. Industry insiders widely believe that Starbucks faces multiple challenges, including stagnant innovation and high prices. Its performance cannot be improved significantly with minor adjustment. It requires a complete reform. Next, on November 5th, China's aircraft carrier Fujian was officially commissioned in Sanya, Hainan, becoming the third aircraft carrier that China currently owns. In terms of carrier strength, China has undeniably become the second largest power in the world. As China's first electromagnetic catapult aircraft carrier, Fujian's performance metrics are on par with those of U.S. carriers. The Fujian is completely self-designed and constructed by China with its core advantages lying in two areas. First, it uses electromagnetic catapult technology, which is far more efficient than the steam catapults used by U.S. carriers. And second, the ship is equipped with KJ-600 airborne early warning aircraft and J-35 carrier-based fighter jets. Additionally, the 055-class destroyer part of the carrier group is considered one of the top performing destroyers in the world today. For decades, only the United States had the complete ability to develop, build, and operate super aircraft carriers. The commissioning of China's Fujian has broken the monopoly of Western powers in supercarrier technology. In discussing Fujian, comparisons are also being made with the current state of U.S. aircraft carriers. The U.S. currently has 11 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, including 10 Nimitz-class carriers and one Ford-class carrier, but only three to four are currently deployable. The Ford-class carrier's electromagnetic catapult technology has a failure rate far higher than expected. The original design goal was one failure for every 4,166 launches, but in actual testing, the failure rate occurs every 181 launches on average. In the event of war, these carriers could need to launch around 200 times per day, which means their catapults would frequently need repairs. Meanwhile, many of the Nimitz-class carriers which the United States Navy currently relies on have been in service for nearly 50 years. Jin Tsai-rong, a renowned Chinese expert on national issues, predicts that in the coming years, the U.S. aircraft carrier's combat capabilities will likely continue to decline while China's naval aircraft carriers will steadily rise in capability. And this trend will become even more apparent in the next 10 to 20 years. And next, let's explore China's next-generation nuclear power technology. Last week, the Chinese Academy of Sciences announced that its 2-megawatt thorium-based molten salt reactor in the Gobi Desert region of northern China achieved the world's first thorium to uranium fuel conversion, becoming the only reactor capable of making thorium burn. Thorium-based molten salt reactors were proposed by U.S. scientists during the Cold War, but were sentenced to death due to complex operational conditions and the inability to rapidly convert to nuclear weapons. The success of Chinese scientists means humanity is one step closer to the next generation of safer, more environmentally friendly nuclear power plants. Considering China's abundant and easily accessible thorium resources, such as the reserves in Byron Herbal in Mongolia, which can supply the country for more than 1,000 years, 
China is well positioned for long-term energy security. The research push in China began after the Fukushima nuclear disaster in 2011, which drew global attention to nuclear safety. The safety features of thorium reactors led China to invest 22 billion RMB, partnering with over 100 research institutions to tackle the technology. Compared to today's mainstream nuclear power plants that uses pressurized water reactors, which must shut down regularly to replace fuel rods, operate under extreme high pressure of about 150 atmospheres, and produce large amounts of nuclear waste. Thorium-based molten salt reactors, or TMSRs, can run continuously without refueling, operate at a normal pressure and solidify after a leak, making them inherently safer. TMSR's advantage of not needing water for cooling makes it possible to deploy nuclear plants in arid or inland regions. Additionally, the characteristic of TSMRs operating at a normal pressure opens doors to nuclear applications on large vessels and mobile platforms. According to the official timeline, China plans to complete a 100-megawatt thorium-based molten salt reactor demonstration plant by 2035, with commercialization expected by 2040. And by 2050, China aims to have 50 thorium reactors nationwide, with a total installed capacity of 50 million kilowatts, meeting 10% of China's electricity demand. Now let's look at some breakthroughs for patients suffering from depression. Depression is one of the leading mental illnesses worldwide, affecting the lives of millions. New research by Chinese scientists hold promise for improving the treatment experience for patients suffering from treatment-resistant depression. On November 6, a Chinese research team published their findings in Nature, uncovering the shared mechanism behind rapid and strong antidepressant effect of ketamine and electroconvulsive therapy, or ECT, the adenosine signaling pathway, this discovery could pave the way for new antidepressant treatments with fewer side effects. Both ketamine and ECT are currently effective interventions for treatment-resistant depression, offering rapid and powerful effects within hours. However, the exact mechanisms behind these therapies remain unclear, and they come with side effects like hallucinations, cognitive damage, and memory decline, making them risky for patients and preventing wide deprecation. The team led by Luo Mingmin at Chinese Institute for Brain Research in collaboration with several top Chinese labs used gene-encoded fluorescent probes to discover that for the first time that both ketamine and ECT caused a dramatic sustained increase in adenosine levels in key brain areas regulating mood. They also found that when adenosine receptors in the brain were turned off for antidepressant effects of both therapies completely disappeared. This research successfully separates therapeutic effects from side effects, providing a clear roadmap for developing the next generation of medications. Next, let's look at the progress in China's humanoid robot. On November 5th, Xiaopeng, a Chinese electric vehicle brand, launched its new generation humanoid robot, Iron. Standing 1.78 meters tall and weighing 70 kilograms, this female robot walks 36 steps in less than 10 meters, causing an internet sensation across China. In a widely circulated video, Iron walks smoothly and naturally, shifting the centers of gravity to support food transitions rather than moving with traditional slow mechanical steps. The realism makes many netizens to comment, it looks like a real person trying to act like a robot. To respond to skepticism, Xiaopeng CEO He Xiaopeng released an unedited video on social media, opening the zipper at the back of the robot, cutting open the fabric and revealing its internal structures. He said, some people don't believe the world is changing so quickly. According to Xiaopeng's official description, the new generation Iron is a one-to-one -one replica of a human with a bionic spine, bionic muscles, and a full wrapping flexible skin. It features 22 degrees of freedom in its hands, just five fewer than humans. It can perform tasks like holding eggs, folding clothes, and organizing items. Additionally, Iron uses solid-state battery technology, ensuring lightweight construction, ultra-high energy density, and safety, providing long endurance and safe operation in complex environments. He Xiaopeng revealed that the new generation iron will enter mass production by the end of 2026, and Xiaopeng has already partnered with Bao Steel for its use in complex industrial environments, such as inspections. In the future, iron will be used in commercial scenarios like guiding, sales, and crowd management. And that's all for today. See you next time.